Hello, this is James from Canonical. We are reviewing The Garlic Balance by Mo Yen. So in our upcoming episode, we are going to discuss the politics surrounding Mo Yen's novels. In fact, most of the discussion around Mo Yen deals with his relationship to the Chinese government. If you just Google Mo Yen or use Ask Jeeves to find Mo Yen, you'll find <laughs> that um, the first results always have to do with whether you know he's a communist shill or not, etc. So while the politics of the writer is obviously fair game for critics, and we talk about it all the time, right? Do you think the political scrutiny of Chinese writers in particular has gone too far? Possibly. Uh, I think we're going to talk about this in a later episode um, quite a bit, but it does seem like there is more put on Chinese writers than there might be on uh, writers in other places, for example, in the U.S. I think a lot of American readers especially fetishize individualism, and they fetishize the idea of a person doing battle with a society that wants to put him down. But they don't really understand the stakes involved for people in other countries and how it really puts a lot of other parts of life in jeopardy to take a stand that way. And it is, in fact, too much to expect from everybody to do that all the time. I think there are some aspects to Moyan's life that are worth that scrutiny. But at the same time, I don't know that he invites it as much as people say he does. Yeah, he personally is a special case because he is not just remaining silent, as his name might indicate, is actually quite involved with the Chinese government and the Chinese government's policy. So he's not a detached observer, which makes criticism of him more valid than it would be of somebody else. So how is he involved? Because I didn't do too much reading into this. I know he's on like certain committees and panels well, in leadership roles as well. What do these committees and panels do specifically? Like, they're not censorship committees, right? I think he's the vice chairman of the China Writers Association. Right, which is government run. Yeah. Well, I guess what I'm saying is, it's not the fact that he is advocating for censorship, but it's the fact that he obviously has been okayed by the censors. And he leads an organization of writers who are okayed by censors, right? Yeah. So he's seen as kind of like a collaborator, but he's not like an, an advocate or a full-throated supporter of censorship, as I understand it. Is that right? Right. I don't think it's the censorship that he's advocating for necessarily. I guess the other side of this question is, should we be focusing more on the literary merit of these Chinese writers like Mo. And of course, in this episode, which you can find in your podcast player or on YouTube, we did just spend like 30 minutes talking about, you know, the literary merit or the lack thereof of this book. Um, do you think generally then that people should be focusing more on the literary merit of Chinese works and less on the politics of Chinese works? I think that our podcast is a good example of how big the discourse is now. I think that there is space in the world for people who are interested to have more than one conversation about Chinese literature. And I think the problem is, is that most people's attention span can only really sustain a few topics. And that's really the bottleneck. It's not that we should talk about censorship less, but that we should have more interest in all of the other aspects. Yeah, I think I agree with that. Um, but in general, yeah, I think we should be talking more about the literary merits. But as you just said, James, uh, in the podcast part of this, we did just spend a lot of time disparaging those merits. Yeah, that's one of these issues because 
The political side of this discussion is low-hanging fruit. Like, we know where we stand. We know where Mo Yen stands, more or less. Um, we know where a lot of other Chinese writers stand. And so it's really easy to have that discussion. In some ways, there's no complication at all, right, in having that political discussion. The complications come around whether or not we should have it, but not on, like, where people actually stand. So the literary discussion is in some ways more interesting because there's more nuance to it uh, and more debate, probably. But the problem is, and this is something we mentioned earlier in the podcast, is so much of what we read is terrible. And so if we focus on the literary merit of Chinese novels, is our discussion just going to devolve into, yeah, this is not so good, you know, like we didn't like this like we mentioned earlier, we didn't actually really like any of the books we read, except for maybe um, the three body problem. I mean, we can point to specific passages that show why we did or did not like something. But yeah, in a book like this, where I think there are some, some things happening that you might call nuance, but I don't think there's enough of it to really sustain a long conversation, at least for us. There are certainly essays out there, and we're going to talk about some of them. You know, I was saying how the political discourse is not very contentious or nuanced in a certain way, because there's not a lot we can talk about. Like, we know where everyone stands. My fear is that the literary discussion is the same, because everyone will say, yeah, all right, this is not so good. You know, like uh, the genre works are okay for genre work. Uh, we understand it in terms of genre. We like it for X reason or Y reason. But if we actually look at the literary merit, my fear is that it'll be just like the political discourse in that we all kind of agree, eh, not so good, not so interesting. I would never say that. I don't think that it would be fair to say that about all Chinese fiction. But I think the reason why the political conversation happens more frequently is because a lot of the China apologists on the internet almost goad you into having it. And even the writers themselves are often saying things like, well, this is just for entertainment. It has no political meaning. This has nothing to do with the government. And as soon as I hear that, it's just like, oh, bullshit. Of course it does. And it just makes me want to have the political conversation. If they didn't mention it, it would have been fine. 